this third video on the chapter on enzymes is about the investigate or the practical procedures which we need to investigate. Now the first practical procedure is the effect of temperature on the rate of enzyme action. The second one is how do we investigate the effect of uh, changing the pH. And the third is enzyme concentration. The fourth is substrate concentration. So we're going to investigate how these will affect the rate of enzyme action. And the last one is inhibitor concentration. So these three factors need to be investigated. You need to understand them because it says investigate and explain the effects. So we have to understand how temperature affects it. We've done that in a previous chapter. pH, enzyme concentration, substrate concentration and inhibitor concentration. Now, in order to study the effect of temperature, we will take uh, five different temperatures and we'll maintain these uh, using a water bath. So you'll have a water bath outside it which has got water in it and we'll put a thermometer in it and by the help of a thermometer we're going to measure the temperature and we're going to maintain it. We probably have a Bunsen burner under it and this Bunsen burner can be turned off or on so that we maintain the temperature at 30. Now these other test tubes you cannot do these at the same time you'll have to do one at a time but these are the five temperatures that I'm showing you can of course take different temperatures you can say 30 40 50 60 70 but as long as you've taken five or more temperatures uh, to each of the test tubes we add important what we need to understand is that we need to add 1% starch or you can use any you can even say 2% 3% or 4% but the important thing is the volume the volume must remain the same and the concentration must remain the same so we've got 5 ml of the starch solution in each of the test tubes so in all the test tubes we have the same volume and the same concentration of starch because we can only change one so we are only changing the temperature that is the factor that we are changing. The rest we've got to keep them constant. Then we take 2% of the amylase and we keep the volume again the same. So this is 5 ml of this is added to each. Now I'm just using these different colors to make you all understand. So we've added amylase to each but of course as I'm saying we would only do one at a time. I'm just giving you the overview of it. Now we're going to keep the temperatures, uh, so the temperatures are different, but how are we going to study? Now basically, if you remember from the previous video, either you can measure how long it takes for entire starch to be converted to maltose. So this is the progress of the enzyme control reaction. So we're going to do this, we're not going to measure the maltose but we're going to measure the starch. So what we do is, we take a white tile and we add drops of iodine on it. Now if you remember iodine is brown in color. So we add drops of iodine and after we have mixed the amylase and the starch in the first test tube, this is the first test tube, we will take a drop after every 30 seconds because that's what's humanly possible. So what we will do is we'll take a drop from here and we'll mix it with the iodine solution and we'll see the color. Now if the color is black, what does that mean? If the color is black, it means there's still starch present. Now again after 30 seconds, we'll take another drop from here and we'll mix it with the iodine and the color is black and we do this every 30 seconds so every 30 seconds we take a drop of this amylase starch mixture and we mix it with the iodine on the tile and if it gives us a black color it means starch is present so black black 30 seconds, then another 30 seconds black. 
and in this 30 seconds it remains brown so that means one 30 second another so one minute one and a half minute two minutes two and a half minutes three minutes so it took three minutes or you can say 180 seconds for the entire starch to be hydrolyzed so what are we studying we are studying the rate of enzyme reaction and we are studying the rate at 30 degrees celsius so we are studying the rate of enzyme reaction and we have studied it so it took 3 minutes or 180 seconds for the entire starch to be hydrolyzed now then we will do the second test tube and we will then mix we should not mix the amylase beforehand we should mix the amylase and we should start testing it now this of course would take lesser time so maybe it takes 150 seconds why because 35 is more temperature so more the kinetic energy and more the collisions more enzyme substrate complex is formed so the rate of reaction would be faster and it would take less time for the starch to be converted so less time would be now of course we are not talking about which enzyme it was and what was the optimum temperature so we would then do it with 40 and then 45 and then 50 and we would repeat the experiment uh, at least three times so that we have a rough uh, we can get five readings so when you have five readings then you know one which doesn't fit the pattern that is the anomalous reading so if it's an anomalous reading we remove that and we calculate the average with after we've removed the anomalous reading so that is why we repeat the experiment we repeat the experiment so that we know the reliability of the results so are reliable are repeat so we repeat the experiments to get five different readings and if they are all consistent means they are all sort of the fit, fitting the same pattern so we do five readings for this five for this five for this five for this and five for this so we repeat the experiment so that the results become reliable now when we studying the effect of pH on the enzyme reaction we will take again five test tubes and we will add 5 ml starch to all of them so 5 ml starch in all the test tubes now I'm giving that a certain color just to make you all understand that the volume must remain the same and the concentration must remain the same and to all these we add 5 ml amylase now I don't mean we start doing all the practicals at the same time but this is just to give you an overview and then in order to change the pH what we do is that we add 2 ml so the total volume must remain the same so we add 2 ml to each but what we are doing is we are changing we are adding a 1% HCl 0.5% HCl we are adding distal water and we are adding 0.5% KOH and 1% KOH so we have changed the pH and we are going to do the same same way that we did in the previous experiment we are going to take a white tile uh, we are going to take a drop of iodine we are going to place iodine drops on this white tile we are going to take a drop from here and we are going to mix it with the iodine and we get a black color with the black color indicates that starch is still present and then we find out the time it takes for all of the starch to be hydrolyzed but in this situation what we are going to do is we are going to keep the temperature constant the temperature would be the same say we keep the temperature of every of them 30 degrees Celsius so we keep all of them in a water bath at the same temperature so in this situation temperature is constant but what we have changed is we have changed the pH now in order to maintain the pH we will have to add a buffer solution now buffer solutions are those which maintain pH like for instance I want the maintain I want the pH to remain 3 so the buffer solution will help in maintaining the pH at 3 so buffer solution will be added the same volume will be added to the buffer solution the same volume will be added to each test tube so that we get the total volume the same 
Now in order to study the effect of substrate concentration and enzyme concentration, you can see the table that I have given you. Uh, we will take five different test tubes and in each we will change the starch solution. Starch is the substrate. So in one we have, please remember the volume must remain the same. This may 1%, this has 2%, this has 3%, 4 and 5%. So volume remains the same. But what we've changed is the substrate concentration. So the enzyme would be the same numbers. So the enzyme would be say 100 active sites. But what we're changing is we're changing the substrate. So sometimes there's 100 in that, sometimes there are 200 in that, sometimes there are 300 in that. So we're changing the substrate so 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, we just can do any percentage. I'm not saying you've got to use these percentages. Then in the other, we have to change the enzyme concentration. So please remember the volume remains the same. So if you're adding 5 ml, we're adding 5 ml in all of them. So we're adding 5 ml of amylase in all of them. So in what, but what we are changing is we are changing the concentration. So we will be more of the active sites. In this say there are 100 active sites. In this there will be 200 active sites. In this there will be 300 active sites. So we are changing the enzyme concentration and we have to study the effect of that. Now the last topic to be done is inhibitor concentration. I have given you two test tubes. Now, of course, we've got to keep everything constant. So the starch concentration and volume must remain the same. So if you've kept this 5 ml, it should be 5 ml here as well. Then we have kept the amylase. If this is 5 ml, well, this should be 5 ml here as well. And the concentration must be, say, if it's 1%, it should be 1% here as well. If the starch solution is 5 ml and this was 1% starch so here also the starch should be 1% and it should be 5 ml. Now what we are changing is we are changing the inhibitor concentration but the volume must remain the same. So the volume is the same but we have changed this. This is a 1% inhibitor and this 2% inhibitor and then of course we are going to use the same experiment and we are going to use the tile and we're going to have drops of iodine on it and then we're going to study the how long does it take for the starch to be hydrolyzed. So basically this is the entire uh, practical procedures which we need to know about the enzyme chapter and of course we need to know the explanations. Inhibitors will of course be either competitive or non-competitive and of course, when you've done the practical and you've studied the results, then you would be able to figure it out, which type of inhibitor is it. And that will be all for the chapter on enzymes.